So, hi everyone. Today we're going to talk about conscientiousness. One of the most important traits of the big five and personality. Why is conscientiousness uh, so important? Well, you might think that intelligence is the one that makes people successful in life, but it's not. It's actually being conscientious. So what is conscientiousness? Well, it's almost too good not to read from it, but I'll, I'll try to uh, do it in a good, a good manner. <laughs> Basically, conscientiousness is having, the, uh, having impulse control. If you can manage your impulses, you can also organize your life and get more things done. But if you stray all the time when you try to focus, you won't get much done. And that's the difference between being successful and not being successful. For example, going to the gym on a regular basis is conscientiousness, being middle or high in conscientiousness. Those who have a hard time going to a gym and stick to a plan, well, they're not. <laughs> Um, but the formulation of uh, consciousness is too good not to be read. Conscientiousness concerns the way in which we control, regulate and direct our impulses. Uh, impulses aren't bad inherently, but occasionally time constraint requires snap decisions. So in some regards, being impulsive is a good thing. But not being conscientious, being low in order and controlling, not controlling your impulses can sometimes be fun. If you're very high in conscientiousness, you'll probably have a trouble having fun and, and being impulsive. On the other hand, being impulsive all the time leads you down another path, which us usually isn't very good in the long term. Nonetheless, acting on impulses can lead to trouble in many ways. And some impulses are in fact antisocial and uncontrolled antisocial acts not only harm other members of society but also can result in retribution towards the perpetrator of such impulsive acts and i talked about this when it came to uh, emotions how if you make someone angry you'll get it back in passive aggressiveness or direct aggressiveness. It's, uh, that's how humans work. So you better be careful who you make angry. And you can do that through impulsive acts and I'll tell you why. Another problem with impulsive acts is that reward might be undesirable and, long -ter and ha come with long-term consequences. Example, including socializing that leads you to lose your job because you don't get anything done at work or you cause uh, the breakup of an important relationship which where you love the person or it's 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 strictly business but you can't do the business anymore because you angered the other person or using pleasure inducing drugs that eventually destroy one's health and that is why research is showing more and more that if you're low in conscientiousness, you have a 40% high increase of dying earlier than those with high scores of conscientiousness. Because high scores aren't in, as impulsive and don't go for drugs uh, and things like that. And if you combine it with, uh, for example, emotional instability, which is neuroticism, people tend to uh, do more drugs, uh, being high in, in neuroticism, emotional stability, and smoke difficult so it's easy to spot those uh, impulsive behavior even when not seriously destructive diminishes a person's effectiveness the less effective and in and that will impact your life in many ways different ways acting on impulses disallows contemplating alter alternative courses that's where you have the alter uh, alternative method and the logical questioning of your emotional system, the system two questioning your system one. And if you can't do that, if you can't value two different options and stop in your track, you'll always go for the emotional part, which gives you the quick response 
to what you're doing or the quick quick feedback for example it makes you happy uh, going with that girl that makes you happy you get attention from that so you go there and then there's another girl that gives you attention and you go to her or you decide to drink wine on a weekday because it gives you quick a quick feedback loop makes you happy you think and that in turn makes a behavior that will be detrimental to your health in the long run uh, so it's wise to have impulse control and to strive to actually have impulse control there's always going to be times when you can have fun uh, but it will not benefit you in the long run um, and if you're going to work in a project for example when you need to stick on track and be helpful to the project as a whole you actually need to have the ability to control your impulses so that you get everything done in time a, a company or will want hire it can't have someone that it has in control of the impulses at work a hallmark of intelligence uh, what potentially separates human beings from earlier life forms is the ability to think about future consequences and before acting on an impulse intelligent activity involves contemplation of long range goals organizing and planning routes to these goals and persisting towards one goal in the face of short-lived impulses to the contrary and the idea that intelligence involves impulse control is nicely captured by the term prudence an alternative label for the conscientiousness domain prudent uh, prudent means both wise and cautious and person who score high on the conscientiousness scales are in fact perceived by others as intelligent the benefit of high consciousness are obviously are obvious uh, conscientious individuals avoid trouble and achieve high levels of success through purposeful planning and persistence they are also positively regarded by others as intelligent and reliable on the negative side they can be compulsive perfectionists and workaholics furthermore extreme conscientious uh, individuals might be regarded as stuffy and boring unconscious uh, people may be criticized for their unreliability lack of ambition and failure to stay within the lines but they will experience many short-lived pleasures and they will never be called stuffy and I told you that there was a reference to Nazis uh, there is evidence piling up now that conscientiousness just like extroversion is connected to dopamine and happiness the positive circuit in your brain which means anticipating happiness when you book a, uh, a vacation and experiencing happiness likewise the, uh, the the empirical data is starting to show that conscientiousness is connected to a feeling and it's called disgust and you can see that in the face when someone does this you see the wrinkles by the nose that's feeling disgusted but you can't you can't say that the person is feeling disgusted with you when you when you talk to them or towards themselves or to something that popped up in their mind so that's very important to understand but here's the thing um, disgusted people don't like smells <laughs> <laughs> they don't like odors so for example conscientious people that are in the gym and train a lot because they're conscientious well they don't like other people stinking uh, they don't like uh, or disorganization in their household they don't like um, clothes on the floor um, an unclean bathroom for example um, they will complain about that pretty much all the time if it's there and if they are high in conscientiousness moreover um, one good trick to see if you are conscientious is that you can take uh, 
a glass of a clean glass you can pour drinkable water in it that it's clean that is clean and take your own saliva spit in the glass and try to drink that glass again I bet you will have a problem doing that that's another circuit in your brain telling you that the water might be contaminated even though it was in your mouth one second ago and that's a survival mechanism that is connected to conscientiousness uh, if you're very low in conscientiousness you might actually be able to drink that water after you spat in it try it I can't <laughs> anyhow um, Nazism and who comes to Hitler apparently uh, Hitler had a secretary that documented everything that Hitler said every morning uh, and throughout his his days especially in the aftermath in the end and what it turns out um, is that Hitler might actually be super high in conscientiousness because if you look at some um, videos from from the Nazi party about Poland for example and how they describe Jews in uh, during the Second World War uh, they describe them not as humans but as a, a virus and a bacteria a disease Nazism apparently tried to eradicate TBC uh, tuberculosis uh, which implies that the underlying thing about Nazism was disease an eradication of disease disgust being disgusted by bacteria and viruses so in the end uh, Hitler actually was disgusted by his own Nazi party and listen to this he actually showered four times a day feeling disgusted about himself and another facet of conscientiousness is that anorexia is connected to conscientiousness because you, you can't control yourself and your urges not to eat and do all these things to become that without being super high in conscientiousness and that's also why for example athletes that eat strictly uh, train strictly those are high in conscientiousness and you don't see non-conscientious people being in the elite uh, training so hard and going to the gym having great bodies for example you actually need to be very high in conscientiousness to achieve those type of levels of fitness anyhow conscientiousness subcategories are as follows self-efficiency orderliness dutifulness achievement striving self-discipline and cautiousness self-efficiency describes confidence in one's ability to accomplish things um, high scores believe that they have intelligence common sense drive and self-control necessary for achieving success like Elon Musk for example low scores do not feel effective and may have a sense that they are not in control of their lives then you have orderliness person with high scores of orderliness are well organized they like to live according to routines and schedules they keep lists and make plans and low scores tend to be disorganized and scattered thirdly dutifulness this scale reflects the strength of a person's sense of duty and obligation those who score high on this scale have a strong sense of moral obligation and low scores find contracts rules and regulations overly confining they are likely to be seen as unreliable or even irresponsible achievement striving individuals who score high on this scale strive hard to achieve excellence the drive to be reorganized as successful keeps them on track towards their lofty goals they often have strong sense of direction in life uh, but extremely high scores may be too single-minded and obsessed with their work obsessive compulsive disorder is connected to that 
Uh, low scores are content to get by with a minimum amount of work and might be seen by others as lazy. Self-discipline. Self-discipline, what many people call willpower, refers to the ability to persist at difficult or unpleasant tasks until they are completed. People who possess high self-discipline are able to overcome reluctance to begin tasks and stay on track despite distractions. Those with low self-discipline procrastinate and show poor follow-through, often failing to complete tasks, even tasks they want very much to complete. Lastly, cautiousness. Cautiousness describes the disposition to think through possibilities before acting, which means using system two, your logical part. You need sugar in your brain to do that. High scores on the cautiousness scale takes their time when making decisions. Low scores often say or do first thing, first thing that comes to mind without deliberating alternatives and the probable consequences of those alternatives. So you see how that is giving you antisocial behavior if you're low in conscientiousness because you're going to set yourself up for failure in relationships, in tasks that you take on to make happen. Uh, it might trigger your, your anxiety because you'll never follow through anything and you feel bad about yourself. But here's the good thing, you can actually train, train conscientiousness, you can make yourself organized, you can force yourself to have a plan, you can force yourself to have a calendar, and put everything in the calendar and stick to it, and actually make that happen. Because personality is fluid, you can change it. And here's the thing, um, there's been science on kids, for example, doing ho homework. Homework for children actually makes them higher in conscientiousness later on in life, uh, which is successful. You actually become successful um, if you are high in conscientiousness. So homework is actually good for children. And kids that are high in conscien conscientiousness when they are uh, kids, actually score one point higher when it comes to uh, uh, assessments. Uh, so it, it pans out to be uh, conscientious even as a kid. And you can spot that in kids at home if they are organized. They also, if you are conscientious, your way of perceiving an event that you experienced uh, in relations to others is more accurate than those who are not conscientious because you'll describe it in a, in, a, in a more accurate manner. And con conscientiousness, being high in that, also mediates some other bad traits uh, in the personality as being high in neuroticism, for example. We know that being high in neuroticism also makes you, in conjunction with low scores in conscientiousness, for example, actually puts you in a bad situation. You have a, a, a bad impulse control and you choose the wrong things all the time due to your uh, highness in, uh, in emotional instability. And that gives you a shorter life. Uh, neuroticism, which I'm going to talk about in the next uh, episode, is, um, is giving people cancer and making them live short, shorter. It's not the personality itself that does that, but it's the behavior that it produces that gives you the troubles. Um, when it comes to conscientiousness uh, and health, they have uh, tracked it down to a gene, we, to one gene and one protein that is connected to living longer and shorter and they have actually seen that high, high, being high in conscientiousness has a positive effect on inflammation in your body. It might be that those people go to the gym and train and work out and do power walks and running and cardio, which keeps them healthy. They also go for the healthy, healthy alternative instead of going for candy, alcohol, quick release through uh, marijuana, smoking marijuana or pot or whatever. 
but it is a difference and it, it does affect your behaviors. I did forget to mention uh, in the last spot a fun fact when it comes to relationships and conscientiousness and why there will be a problem if you choose someone that is low in conscientiousness when you're, you're in self, when you yourself is high. Women are across the board, across the world, higher in conscientiousness than men. But in general, both sexes are the same. The majority of both women and male are the same. But, <clears throat> for example, if some of the partners, uh, some one of the partner is one or two points higher in conscientiousness uh, than the other, that person will in fact uh, react to disorder at home uh, just before the other one will, and that will happen all the time. And that might come out as nagging or annoying, but that's just the way it is. And if you know about the effect, you can constrain yourself not to point it out all the time because it's natural. And that's just you being a slightly higher in conscientiousness. And that's the consequence of it, that you'll always be the one that notices the uh, house not being clean at first or noticing that the, uh, the pile of washing hasn't been done and you'll always do that slightly before your partner does which means that you'll always be the one telling your partner that you're never organized you never do things the right way but now you know that you can stop that because it's just different levels of conscientiousness but that's always funny because I think that science also speaks about um, the one thing that that people argue the most about in relationships are in fact the household chores and that's connected to conscientiousness well that's all i have to say about that that's all i have for consciousness uh, if you liked it put a thumbs up uh, or a thumbs down if you didn't like it put a comment uh, down below and i'll see you in the next one hopefully cheers everyone